Alrighty, for this tutorial, we're going to go through making an annotated line chart with highcharts.js, just like this tutorial in the textbook in chapter 11. By the way, when you're making your own interactive charts, you can feel free to use any of these templates or tutorials. You can make a bar chart, you can make a scatter plot or a bubble chart, um, and those are going to use chart.js instead of highcharts.js but they're both really similar. So if you learn how to use one, you'll be able to learn how to use these other JavaScript and code templates. But for today, we're just gonna make one that looks kind of similar to this. All right, so the first thing you've gotta do is go to this book chapter, chapter 11, and click on the annotated line chart section so that you can scroll down to the GitHub repo link. Then you're going to navigate to that GitHub repo, which looks like this, the annotated line chart with high charts repo. And there's some instructions here, that's fine. You're gonna to need to click on use this template once you've logged into your own GitHub account. You can go ahead and click, and you can give the repo any name you want. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a similar name, maybe something like line chart practice. It's totally fine. And then, you can give it a description like exercise for class, making a line chart, whatever you want. Okay, and then you're gonna click on create repository from template. Once you do that, it will automatically copy over everything that's from the original repo into your repo, including the description and the instructions and all of that. So we don't wanna use their version of this chart link once we you know, hypothetically publish our chart online. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually go to settings and enable GitHub pages. This will allow us to have our own link in place of that one and replace it. So we're going to enable the main branch as our source. Make sure to click save. And then I'm going to copy this link just like we did before and then edit my readme file so that it has the correct link here. And then as usual, commit the changes. Make sure you save that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the line chart practice repo homepage, and I'm gonna start thinking about, okay, I wanna use this template, but I don't wanna make the exact same chart. So maybe I wanna make a chart like this, but that shows other data. In order to do that, I need to replace this data.csv file. And if I'm gonna replace it and use the same template, I need to make sure that my data is formatted in a very similar way, or at least in a way that's compatible. So I'm gonna to wanna to have a column for years, some kind of numeric data, maybe two columns of numeric data, and then a final column that has notes in it, not for every row, but for some of the rows, and these notes are going to represent those annotations that we saw before that are actually interactive. So if I go back here, you can see these annotations appear whenever one of those messages was added to that final column, right? So instead of air transport data, I've decided to go ahead and use some refugee statistics for this example. So you're gonna to need to go to unhcr.org slash refugee dash statistics, or simply Google UNHCR or UN Refugee Agency Data Finder. Um, this should be fairly easy to find. And we're going to make a chart that's a little bit like one of these that they have on their homepage, actually. And if you scroll down, you'll see that one of their main statistical insights is that there are just five countries that represent a third of all refugees under uh, the UN's mandate, and that Venezuela has the second to largest uh, population of refugees under the mandate. So that information comes into play later. But if you click here on Data Finder, that's where we're actually gonna be able to get some of these numbers in a format that we can download. So, let's wait for this to load. What we're gonna look for here is our years, which they already have, how many refugees there are, and how many asylum seekers there are, which actually we kind of already have that information but I'm gonna ask you guys to narrow this down. We're going to make it so that the country of asylum, where people are seeking that asylum or seeking to go to, 
is the United States, just to make it even more specific. So I'm going to type in a custom selection here, and I'm going to choose United States of America as the destination. And then for country of origin, because of that statistic that we saw, I'm really interested in looking at Venezuela. So I'm going to go ahead and put in Venezuela. And now all of these numbers have automatically updated for me. If I click on the line chart right here from this page, I can actually see that they have an interactive chart already. So we're basically going to be uh, recreating our own version of this. But if you ever wanted to, you could download this as a PNG or as an SVG and then edit it in a vector editing software like Adobe, for example, Adobe Illustrator or something like that. But we're going to make our own. So now that we have the data that we need, we're going to work with it in Google Sheets. I'm going to go to sheets.google.com. Oops. Or actually, I have it open here already. I'm going to just create a new one from here to make my life easier. And all we have to do is copy and paste because this is fully um, editable. This is fully already table data. So I copy and pasted that. I'm going to give my spreadsheet a title. It's important. Um, UNHCR refugee data. And then we always, always, always include our source on another tab, right? So I'm going to go ahead and before I do anything else, copy and paste the link where I got this into a new tab. And because I noticed that there's a little asterisk here for 2021, I'm going to go ahead and copy the message that comes with that asterisk, which is at the top of the page, which is the data for 2021 is only available up until mid-year. That's fine. We're still going to use it. Okay. And then we can also name this tab original data. Okay. Now we need to make some edits to this data, but before we do that, let's go ahead and just make a copy of the sheet. Duplicate that tab. That way, you know that whatever changes you make, you still have the original there for you. This is standard stuff, right? So now I can remove this asterisk from 2021. I can actually delete these columns that have country of origin and country of asylum because they're going to be the same every time. I'm going to delete columns B through C. And I can also delete the columns that are just full of zeros. So now I have the year refugees under UNHCR's mandate and asylum seekers as a column. We're going to add one more column, which is going to hold our annotation. And here, what I want you guys to do is choose what kind of annotations you think are important to add. So personally, I know that last year in 2021, uh, Venezuela was designated for temporary protected status or TPS, allowing people to potentially have a more protected way of coming into the United States. And since we're looking at um, asylum in the United States, this could be a relevant detail. So for 2021, for that year, I'm going to go ahead and add as an annotation that Venezuela was designated for temporary protected status. Like that. I would like to challenge you guys to add at least one more in one of the other years with a fact or a figure that you think is important. Okay, but just for the purposes of this, we're going to just keep this one for now. Now, another important thing, which is particular to high charts, is that we don't want any commas to be present in these numbers. So I'm actually going to ask you to select all these numbers, format them just as plain text, and then go through and remove the commas. You could also select all of these after formatting them as plain text and do a find and replace where you find a comma and replace it with nothing. Okay, just two ways of doing the same thing. This is just going to ensure that our numbers are processed correctly. Now, after we've done these changes, we can download just this tab as a CSV file. And then we're going to want to rename, I've done this once already, we're going to want to rename that file that we downloaded to be data.csv. Why? Because in our template, we need a file called data.csv in order for that template to work correctly. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to upload my new data.csv file by dragging and dropping that file into GitHub over here. Oops, not all my files, just data.csv. And then because it has the same name, it's going to override my other file. I'm going to make a note of that in my commit. So I'm going to say override data.csv with new data. Okay, and then commit changes. Now, if I go to this link in a minute, it's going to update and it's going to have my new data there. So let's take a look and see. Okay, it still hasn't updated. That's totally fine. While that updates, I want to show you that you can edit this readme and you can put your own picture here by uploading it to your repo. So as long as you have a PNG image inside of your repo, you'll be able to replace this one and not have it here anymore. And you're also able to edit any of the other information that's here. So we'll take a picture of our chart at the end. We can cancel changes for now and we'll replace that uh, screenshot basically that's here. Another thing that's interesting is that once we have that data uploaded, we can also change the index.html file to add, for example, a title that's more relevant to what we're talking about. Or we could add some new details to the script.js file. This is where we would change the title of the chart, the caption, all of that stuff. And this is also where we might be able to add some custom colors and some other information. So you might notice that in the textbook itself, it says, oh, if you want to know more, go to the high charts API reference. This is going to be a really good tool for everyone to check out. And if you search for something like colors, uh, plural, then you can see, oh, there's some examples about adding colors to things, but you can actually see code snippets like this one of other kinds of charts that you can create with high charts. So this is another template that you might be able to kind of reproduce and use in your own experience, your own life. Okay, let's see if this updated. Still no. Okay, I'm going to come back to this once it has updated. So this is ready now. It still says air transport. We haven't changed that. But we've got our line for asylum seekers and we have our line for refugees under UNHCR's mandate. There are some things that you should note. The years along the bottom have all these decimal points in between. But as long as we make sure that our chart is not any larger than a certain width, on our final HTML page or on our final medium screenshot, then the, that problem is fixed. So you can just resize that to fix this problem. Also, you can see that this annotation, you can move it. So you can actually drag it and kind of move it away from where it is on that view. That's just the point. And also these are interactive, just like we saw the original one was. Oh, and also we need to add a space between refugees and under. You see that? It's kind of stuck together. So let's go ahead and do that first, actually. Let's go to data.csv. Let's edit this file. And let's put a space between refugees and under. It's a very easy fix. Oh, one more thing. If we want that annotation to be attached to the black line instead of the blue line, then we just need to make sure that um, the lines are in different order. So if we go to the original data and we were to change this order, and let's say I add a column left here and put asylum seekers before refugees under the mandate, then that's going to make it so that this annotation gets stuck to the column that's right before it. So you can do that too um, to practice. And then let's go ahead and change the title as well. So let's go to script.js and then over here where it says title, we're going to change this. Instead of air transport passengers carried, let's go ahead and say um, number of Venezuelan asylum seekers is steadily rising, right? Maybe asylum or Venezuelans seeking asylum in the U.S. maybe. because that's how we filtered the data. 
And then as you can see, we've got a caption source. The World Bank actually sources you an HCR now. And then we want to put that it wasn't created by Hands on Day of Is, it was created by your name. Put your name here. Um, and in order to make sure that this GitHub repo is the right link, you want to copy the link to your repo here instead of their repo and replace that. Okay, and then x axis is still year, but y axis is no longer passengers. Now it's um, people seeking asylum in the United States or in the US. And then everything else here looks good. Oh, I was going to show you guys before how to add those colors. We kind of hinted at that. If you want to add your own colors, you can use this demo that we looked at a moment ago and just copy this code that says set options for colors and paste that right before the high charts dot chart container on line 54, 55. And then you can add whatever colors you want here. Really, you only need two because you only have two lines. So you can use a color generating website like Coolers to find two colors that you really like. And then let's start the generator. You could copy something like, oh, I like this orange. Copy the hex code, put it as my first color, right? Hashtag as well. And then, oh, I like this blue. I can copy this blue as well. So that's just an example in this particular chart of setting the colors. You can always reach out to me if you want help setting other colors for other kinds of charts. So I'm going to go ahead and commit these changes. I've got my title, my name, the new source, uh, all of the information that I need. And all you need to do to differentiate yours from this is edit the readme. So let's see if this updated. We'll see. Okay, so this hasn't entirely updated yet, but once it does, all you have to do is upload the picture right here and replace this annotated line example PNG. Once you do that, this picture will update as well. I'm going to come back in just a second to show how to do that. And then to turn in your work, you just need to copy the link to your repo and post it on Canvas. Okay, so this is ready now and you can see the new colors and you can see the new title and new um, information down here, the source, all of that. So I'm just going to show you really quick how to take a screenshot. And well, I'm using the Firefox take a screenshot functionality, but you can use whichever screenshot you want. And I just want to show you how to replace this picture in the readme. In an ideal scenario, you wouldn't replace just the picture. You would replace all the text and the text would explain all of your data. But for now, let's just replace the picture. So I saved a screenshot to my computer. I'm going to rename this as uh, linechart.png. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and upload that file to my repository, linechart.png. And then I'm going to remove the other one, the annotated line example. So I can actually do that by clicking on this one and then clicking on this delete button, delete this file, and then just commit your changes. Okay, so now let's go back to the home. It looks like my other picture was also deleted. Let me just go ahead and upload that file again because it looks like I deleted that by accident. Linechart.png. Oops, it's because I didn't commit the change. Linechart.png, commit the change. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to edit this readme. Instead of dot slash annotated line example, we're going to put linechart.png and commit our changes. And that's going to allow us to have our new chart pop up right here in the readme. Okay, with that, you're done. Go ahead and email me if you have questions or if you want to try doing this with other data. And good luck using HiChart.